Already, a plume of radiation from the gas released in the explosion was drifting across Japan. The government widened the evacuation zone, ordering everyone within 12 miles of the plant to flee. Nori Okamura and his surviving daughter were in that danger zone when they got the news. これ、ここにちゃちょっとまずいなっていう気持ちもあって。で、その間にあの、最近ちょっと On the afternoon of March the 12th, a mass exodus began. The world started to realize that things were going badly wrong in Fukushima. More than 100,000 residents evacuated from the villages around the plant. What they didn't know then was that some were fleeing into even greater danger, straight into the fallout. To this day, what happened remains a source of anger for the evacuees. Nozomi Hiruchi and her young family fled their village on the day of the explosion. The previous day, her father had been killed in the tsunami. That day, a government computer system known as Speedy predicted that the radioactive fallout would settle exactly where some of the evacuees were heading. But officials at the Nuclear Safety Agency, NISA, say they were unwilling to give the data to the Prime Minister because they weren't sure it was accurate. <laughs> In the district of Tsushima, 20 miles northwest of the plant, thousands took shelter, thinking they'd reach safety. In fact, radiation levels were higher than at some parts of the nuclear plant itself. These doses were not life-threatening, but they've left evacuees desperately worried about their health. The Haruchi's third child was born just after the evacuation. <laughs> Sixty-five hours had now passed since the tsunami. At the Fukushima plant, the workers faced a new crisis. The explosion had set back efforts to get water into the melting cores of reactors one and two. Now, reactor three was also in meltdown. TEPCO needed help. A specialist team of soldiers was ordered to the site. Another hydrogen buildup meant the reactor three housing could explode at any moment. Hi, 
大変やっぱり緊張あの我々もあの本当に放射線が漏れている汚染地域に入るというのは実は想定した訓練だったんですが実際入るのはまあ初めてでした。Colonel Shinji Iwakuma and his team wore suits that shielded their bodies from radioactive particles, but provided no protection against lethal gamma rays. Their mission was to inject water directly into the core of Reactor 3. で、まさにこれからじゃホースを接続するために車に降りようとしたときに、爆発。実はジープの上というのはキャビンで布でできてるんですがそれを破るようにあの大きなコンクリートの塊が落ちてきて爆風でこう接合部分からは相当中に放射性物質が入,入りました警報をつけてたんですがもうそれはもう当然ずっと鳴りっぱなしという状況になりました The soldiers were now surrounded by lethally radioactive debris They were injured in the blast, but managed to flee the scene before anyone received a fatal dose. 少しでも早く危険なところから離れるということで、何重にも運が良かったことが重なりましたですね。本当にラッキーでした。もうラッキー以外の何もでもなかった。Conditions at the plant were now becoming untenable. Radiation near one of the reactor buildings had risen to 1,000 millisieverts per hour. After one hour of exposure at these levels, radiation sickness sets in. A few hours would mean death. As night fell, the news was passed back to TEPCO HQ in Tokyo. The corporation began to consider withdrawing its workers from the plant. The plant was a very important part of the plant. 退避を検討するとそういう可能性が出てくるだろうとそういうことで、えー、検討をするという話を、まあ、あの国の方にはお伝えをして、えー、おります。What happened next has become one of the most controversial chapters in the story of Fukushima. That night, the Prime Minister was woken with a disturbing message. He was told that TEPCO planned to withdraw every last worker, total surrender. There was no mention of leaving some men behind to keep control of the plant. まさにチェルノブイリの何十倍というその放射性物質がまき散らされることになると。At that moment in Fukushima, the plant manager Masao Yoshida had gathered all the workers together. 吉田所長はこれから避難を始めたいと思います。で、その時点で吉田さんはもう覚悟を決めて。彼はそこで死ぬつもりだったんだろうけどもねとりあえず250に殺すわけいかないんでで帰ってくれと、うん、もうこ,ここまでやったんだからしょうがないとこれ以上はもう手段も何もないから帰ってくれと発言的にはちょっとあまり良くないのかもしれないですけど私はもうほっとしました早く出たい。Meanwhile, the Prime Minister was arriving at TEPCO headquarters in Tokyo, determined to stop the withdrawal. He demanded to speak to TEPCO's executives. 
Via a video link, he was watched by the engineers in Fukushima. ま、TEPCO's executives still deny that they ever intended to withdraw all of their workers. That morning, they agreed to keep a skeleton crew at the plant. They were to become known as the Fukushima 50. For now, they were locked down in the central control room. Hundreds of workers were on standby a few miles away, ready to lay pipes that could pump water into the reactors. But the radiation levels were now too high for them to approach the plant. A team of American nuclear specialists who just arrived in Japan were fearful that TEPCO and the government were now out of their depth. We were given numbers, very low numbers of people who were on the site, and we knew that that wasn't sufficient to, to do what needed to be done at that, at that time. That day, frustrated at the lack of information the Japanese were giving them, the Americans decided to fly a surveillance drone over the plant. The data they got was disturbing. A third hydrogen explosion had exposed pools of discarded radioactive fuel to the atmosphere. These spent fuel rods were still highly radioactive, 